Today, I'm going to have a free gift for you. Remember to check the link confidenceperformance.com slash free course. You're going to get the easy self-defense course for mothers and daughters. If you are not mothers and daughters, it's okay. You can also have that for fathers and daughters or father and son and anyone who would like to learn easy self-defense because this course is created for Mother's Day celebration. That is why I focus more on mothers and daughters and open to any women. Now, you may have question, how can I get access and how long is the course? The course is about one hour with bonuses. Remember to check it down, the link below, okay? It is confidenceperformance.com slash free course. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Have you applied the techniques that I taught you yesterday? Yesterday we did dumbbell with music, remember? Dumbbell with music, bicep, tricep, and different type of upper body or arms movement. So today we're gonna to talk about top five parenting tips. My top five parenting tips, okay? I know everyone's background is different. Everyone has a very different background. You may have different experience than me. I'm here to share with you what I learned, what I know, and what works for me. I hope whatever works for me, it will help you. And I hope it works for you too. Okay? Got it? Good. So I'm a parent of two sons. They are... 17 and are uh, going to 17 and the other one is going to 20 years old. So one is university. Another one, the younger one, is going to apply to university in the fall between September and December. I have a background in education. I was a certified teacher. I did my undergraduate in Bachelor of Education in Physical and Health Education. Furthermore, I came to Canada to further my studies, so I obtained two uh, master's degree. Currently, uh, trying to finish my PhD, but uh, my full-time job and my family commitment and my services, my volunteer works, take a lot of my time. So, here I am. I would like to share with you my top five parenting tips. I hope it works out for you, okay? And remember, if you have any question, Leave me a comment below, send me an email, contact at confidenceperformance.com. Okay, remember, contact at confidence, with a C, performance.com. You can always welcome to check my website. It is confidenceperformance.com. I'm the CEO and founder of confidenceperformance.com. Besides that, I have an athletic background. I competed in the... Uh, at the 1992 Olympic Games, uh, won the Asian Championships and multiple uh, international games or international uh, tournament. You can look into my biography in the about or profile. So let's start. I'm going to show you the, my presentation. I prepare my PowerPoint slide. Oh, five printing tips so you can see we as a mother or a parent we need to have the skills. Sometimes we learn from our parents, you know, it's hand-me-down knowledge, but in this scientific or modern world, we need to be able to equip ourselves for the challenges that we are encountering every day because the world is changing, right? The world is changing, so we need to change. So what are the tips? First of all, Remember, the world is changing, we need to change, but the philosophy and the value are not. There's a balance between love and discipline, okay? We know as a parent or grandparents, we always want to give love. We love, 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 love. What happens we love too much and without discipline? So love and discipline, for me, in my opinion, and also from my research and also from my experience, I think it is important to be balanced. If we have too much love, what happened? The child may overstep you. The child may not even listen to you when they grow up. 
and the child maybe become uh, self-centered, right? Everything is me, me, me. You give me too much attention. It's all about me. See, my mom sacrificed everything because of me. So it's I am more important because you love them, right? Or love your children or him or her. So what happened if we give too much discipline? You got it? If we have a little bit of love or no love at all, but we give them a lot of discipline, too strict, very strict, you know? You have to do this. You have to do that. Uh, you have to do this study, this program. You cannot go to science or you, you cannot go to art or you cannot go to Taekwondo if, even though you really like it, right? Uh, you cannot go to swimming because it's dangerous, even though you really want to learn how to swim. Or you cannot talk to strangers or you cannot do this. Of course, talking to stranger, uh, it really depends if the stranger needs help and you think it's safe to do so, for sure, go ahead. But if we have too much discipline, what happened to the children? The children may become timid, lack of self-confidence, because everything is like, oh, I cannot do this. Oh, I cannot do that. If I do this, I may get uh, punished. If I do that, I may get uh, injury. You know, if I do that, people may bully me. If I do this, I may get failure. I fail this, I fail that. I'm so scared, I'm so scared, you know, because my mom told me not to do this or my parents told me not to do that. So if we have too much discipline, the kids tend to be um, meh, turn to timid. So we need to have balance between love and discipline. I know it is not easy to measure, you know how to measure balance? It's like you need to have like scale, really a scale like, okay, 50 and this is 50. It is very hard to make sure. I know that it's very subjective. But then always remember, when you love someone, you need to discipline them. You need to know what is allowed and what is not allowed, right? That's why we need to go to slide number two, boundary. So we need to have boundary. So boundary, we need to have the boundary. So love and discipline also need boundary. It's very important. What is boundary? Boundary means I'm the mom, you are the child. Okay, so I'm more senior and I have the authority. You are the child. So you need to listen to parents when it comes to safety, health issues, moral issues, okay, ethical issues. So we always need a boundary even with friends, right? Even with um, co-workers, colleagues. Otherwise, your colleague may can tell you do whatever or he or she wants you to do, right? There's a boundary. So there's a boundary so that we protect each other, protect the kids and protect parents. And the kids need to know we are the parents, they are the child or they are the children. They will need to listen to us because we have the authority, because we feed them, we provide them with all the necessary uh, skill in life. So there's always a boundary. Otherwise, they will um, may not listen to you if if it is their chores to clean the house, to clean the washroom, they may not listen to you because they don't understand what is boundary, okay? So now we go to the slide number three. Be a role model. Be a role model. It's very important, be a role model. Why? We keep telling our children, you have to work hard. You have to study hard, you know? Going to university or going to school is important. But then we ourselves, we don't study hard. We don't work hard. It is very hard for them to have the interest because we don't show the interest. So like for example, if you always like to read book and you really love to read book and they see that you love read book and they respect you, they have, you know, they, they may have better understanding about you, especially in you and your child have very good relationship. If you both have very good relationship, how to have a good relationship. Of course, it comes to love and discipline. When you have balance, the kids normally will have good relationship with you. So if you like to read book, the kids will follow your example. Okay. If you want your kids to, to have the courage, you know, to have the courage to overcome obstacles, you yourself have to show to them. You have to tell them your difficulty and you have to tell them your difficulty and how you overcome difficulties. That way you show them courage. Otherwise, you always tell them the good thing, but they never see you having hard time. 
like for example for me i like to share my with my kids the hard time i face in my work in my life uh depends what kind of thing but generally you can share with your kids oh i'm having a hard time i'm really tired uh, i don't think uh, i'm able to make it this time but i'm going to work hard can you pray for me or oh, i'm going to work hard cheer for mommy so they're going to cheer for you and same thing vice versa when they are having hard time you cheer for them so they learn from you i see that in my children they like to copy me <laughs> whatever i say and when i say something positive when i cheer for them and when i'm having difficulty they cheer, cheer me back actually they're using the same words that i when i use uh, on now for them when i use to speak with them and when i use the certain words to cheer them they actually cheer me back with the same words so it's kind of a, a role modeling yeah same thing with swearing if you swear a lot at home your kids may copy you right but if you always say positive thing always encouraging thing and always um believe in them it's very important trust them sometimes you may not have trust i know because they're still young but from our look you have to show them that you trust them. I trust my kid. So if I have difficulty, I feel scared and I'm, I feel insecure. I actually pray to God to give me the strength so that I can show them good role modeling. Good role modeling is very important. If your kids learn negative things from you, just because maybe you show negative things, maybe from you or, of course, you, they can learn some negativity from movies. So that's why it's another parenting skill you need to know how to pick a good movies for them to watch it's not all movies are good i know you can learn lessons from the movies but it really depends on the age if you have a certain maturity you can understand but many kids do not understand the lesson they just copy the bad thing they may not remember the good things from the movies so always check the rating you know every movie has rating for example pg pg what is PG in movies? Parental guidance, parental control, or PC. Uh, you need to watch with them according to the age. Normally, movie with a G in general is for everyone, but then nowadays, many movies have um, a rating that is kind of very open, even though they say it's uh, for general, but I think in my opinion, it's actually parental guidance. Yeah, if it is, if the movie read as like, uh, R, that's no no for children, right? If that movie said for <clears throat> 13 years old and up, 13 years old and up, if your kids are still like really young, I would say I wouldn't recommend that because why? They may not have the maturity to think about the lesson they can learn from the movies. They may just copy the negative thing, the bad things. Okay, now next, go to the next slide. Self-care. Self-care is very important. It's not easy to be a parent. We need to take care of ourselves. If we always give, 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 what happened to our body? We may feel tired easily. We drain out. We think, 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 and then we drain out, right? So we have to take care of ourselves. When we love ourselves more, I'm not saying that you love ourselves more than you actually ignore your kids. I'm saying that you need to take care of yourself so that you are physically healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally, you are calm, you don't feel um, you don't feel uh, down all the time, you don't get angry all the time. You can control yourself emotionally. You feel calm. That's why self-control is very important. I mentioned yesterday, self-control is a skill that everyone should have. So self-care, when you know how to love yourself, then you know how to love them a better way. So when you know how to love yourself, you can love them even better, right? So remember that. Next one, support group. Support group first, but there's no ranking of importance. They're all important. I wouldn't say which one comes first, which one comes second. Just remember the five tips. You see, I have actually have 10 tips, 20 tips, but I just pick five so that you can remember easier because too many sometimes you don't remember i don't remember if too many too i have to write down you know what <laughs> especially you're growing 
senior, <laughs> I wouldn't say older. I'm growing older, so I have to write down most of the time. Otherwise, I wouldn't remember. So what? What did I do yesterday? What did I do? <laughs> oh, what, an hour ago. Yeah. So write it down if you um, you need to remember better. Sometimes what is written gets remembered easier. Okay. When you write something, it's actually you remember better because it's part of the learning process. You write down it's part of the visual or kinesthetic learning. You write down, you can see it, and then your hand is moving. It's part of the kinesthetic learning. Okay. Anyway, it's like a teaching thing, <laughs> teaching theory. So support group is very important. Support group. When I was a young mom, I was a, when I was a young mom, I joined support groups. Okay. Not only one, but actually I have two. Why? Because I feel that oh, as a young mom, I don't know how to raise my kids uh, in this modern society, right? So I joined support group. I have the church group, but I also have the non-church group. Uh, we learn different things, but they've both helped me. So support group is important. You need to join support group. Uh, if you think raising kids are tiring and you may run out of ideas, okay? In the support group, you need to find people that you trust. You share your issues. And they can help you. They can pray for you if this is a church group. And you may help them back, right? So we help each other. And in the support group, sometimes we read book together. We share about certain topics. And then we share what we learn. And we share how we apply what we learn from book to our children. That's how I learn. So I learn from Bible. I learn from books. I learn from people who have raise good kids right you have to see role model outside you have to see like oh that kid is really good maybe i should interview the parents oh how did you raise your kids can you give me some tips so you learn from them so that's how i learn i learn from parents that have raised good kids i learn from books i learn from support groups i learn from uh, the bible principle so that's how it is i hope you enjoy my sharing <laughs> Remember to click like if you think it helps you and also to share with your friends. Okay. Remember to share with your friends who uh, you think your friends are having hard time raising kids or even though they may not have hard time raising kids, it is good to share with them because this can be a reminder. You remind them, right? Sometimes we know a lot of things, but sometimes we forget, even though we, we knew it, but we forget about it, right? Or we forgot. So, when people send you something, it's kind of like, oh, remember, remind you. Yeah, 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 I should do this. Okay, I forgot about it. Okay, thanks for the reminder. That's how it is. Okay, that's it for today. So I see you next week. Remember to check my YouTube and see you tomorrow.